code is everywhere. It comes from beautiful minds. Hey, my name is Sebastian Lind. I'm at Kumar Yeshwala. My name is Isang Idio Jr. Hey, my name is Don Huang. And with the wonder of open source, there are always new worlds to explore. A monitoring tool where you can live monitor your Linux server. Using the negative selection algorithm to identify anomalies in Linux systems. To work with Unpy Linux, uh, to make it running on IBM's machines. We understand how the mapping of commands works to enable better solutions. It's not about finding the next big thing, but having the freedom to see how many next big things you can find. I've been contributing a few open source projects since my first day in college, and I absolutely love doing it. It's simply the future. So let's get to it. Let's code the future. About from a business perspective. Yeah. <laughs> It's great to be here today. That video also reminded me of what I felt like when I was an undergrad just getting my feet wet with, with open source and using Linux. I was hooked from the moment it started. I was hooked on the speed, I was hooked on the ability to get things done, and I was hooked on the ability to contribute back and share with others what I was able to do. When I joined IBM, nothing changed except it actually got more dramatic. I was able to be on software teams, use more open source, and lead teams and contribute that much more back to the community. And now, today, I have Linux in my title at IBM. So how cool is that? Um, Linux One, if you're not familiar with it, is a family of highly engineered systems that combine the best of open and Linux with the best of enterprise computing. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what we've been up to around Linux One today, and then have Sean come up and tell an awesome story about how he's helping to change the world. I don't have to tell you all about the, the importance of open source, but I also do think it's helpful every once in a while to engage in a little thought experiment. What would the world be like without open source? To me, we'd probably end up with a handful of very large tech companies, <coughs> IBM, producing maybe mediocre software, and not a lot of innovation, not a lot of motivation to innovate. We'd be, in short, decades behind where we are today. But where we are today is very different. We have countless open source projects that many of you all are involved in that are tackling and going after great opportunities, but also at the same time tackling some of the most vexing challenges that we face. Developers are collaborating in their code, and code is the engine that's going to drive us forward. Open source plays a critical role in how, how fast we can innovate, but also how fast we can deploy new technologies once they are made available. And IBM's been a very active participant in open source for years. We were an original funder of the OSDL, a precursor to the Linux Foundation, We've created dozens of projects, and all told, we have over tens of thousands of employees that contribute to open source on a regular basis. Up here are a few recent projects that we've been very active in. I'll touch a little bit on Hyperledger, because we're convinced of its power to drive new, innovative business models and transform industries. A year and a half ago, it was created, the Hyperledger project with 19 general members, now there are over 130. It's one of the fastest, if not the fastest, project in, open, in, in the Linux Foundation history. If you haven't started to play around with Hyperledger, you can get started today. We have a plenty of SMEs that can help you get engaged and get you plugged in and going. And at IBM, we're delivering a premier blockchain solution. It's fully integrated, it's ready, to go. It allows you to develop, govern, and operate a blockchain network across multiple entities, be it companies, be it partners, be it others in the industry. It was built on over 400 engagements that we've had with clients and partners. It's flexible software as a service, but it's built on open source, it's delivered through IBM Cloud, and it's powered and secured by Linux One. 
That's right, when you go to IBM.com and the cl IBM Cloud and provision a blockchain service, it's actually running on a Linux One server in our cloud data centers. There are many companies and partners that we're working with to create very innovative solutions, and I'm showing a few up here. Intellect EU is integrating new blockchain business processes with core legacy systems. Everledger is trying to take fraud and abuse out of the supply chain for high value goods. And SecureKey is doing nothing short of trying to create the next generation of identity and authentication solutions for the modern world. And as we like to say, you to the power of IBM. You worry about your code. You worry about delivering that next new innovation, that thing that's going to change the world. And you let us worry about delivering systems that will deliver performance at scale, availability at scale, and security at scale. And just on this point, I know Joseph was just up here, and the story around hit record is awesome from a collaboration perspective, but I wanted to make another tie-in to Edward Snowden and his work in that portrayal. What, Ed, what, what, was, what Edward Snowden did, you, know, you, have, you may have your opinion on it, regardless of what that opinion is, what he laid bare was the fact that there is a tremendous amount of opportunity out there and, and threats from both the outside of your company, but also within your company. Those internal threats can have access to you know, compromised credentials or elevated credentials that can give them a wide range of, of access to critical data. Not many days go by without a data breach. That data is a company's data, but really it's your data, right? Every day we see something in the news about how our data about our personal lives is being compromised and put in the hands of others. And with Linux One, we've created unique security infrastructure to help protect against internal and external threats. It's known as secure service containers. This is a firmware-based secure Linux environment that offers tamper resistance and pervasive encryption of the entire stack of software and the data that is running in the container. If an administrator wanted to or was asked to provide the contents of what's running in that container, they'd not be able to do this. This underpins our blockchain offering and has up until now really only been available through that blockchain offering. What we are announcing today is that we are announcing a beta as we start to open up this technology and make it more broadly applicable and available. <clears throat> Additionally, as I mentioned at the start, Two years ago, we introduced the Linux One family to the world. We did it at LinuxCon. At the time, we introduced two systems, the Emperor, the bigger one, and the Rockhopper, a smaller one. And today, we are announcing another family member, the Emperor Two. We've continued to innovate across the entire stack that we provide. That goes all the way down to the microprocessor where we've delivered new capabilities for symmetric multi-threading, SIMD. We've increased the amount of silicon we've devoted to encryption by 4x. You move up a layer into the system design. We deliver an overall balanced system design that allows you to scale up and support data serving and cloud services in a secure manner. What this allows you to do, again, is to not worry about things like scalability, security, performance, and again, get back to and focused on delivering capabilities that are gonna help you achieve your goals. We have three clients that I'm showing here, just to give you a, a sense of what they're doing with the technology. Huawei Express is a transportation provider in China that is enabling the purchase of mobile tickets for buses and trains from their mobile phone to the Chinese population not a small population. Symphonia RX provides medical therapy management treatment programs for one out of seven US citizens. And Cognition Foundry is building out secure premium services that allow startups to get going really fast and deliver technology and their solutions in a secure way and at scale. 
And now I'd like to have Sean, invite Sean Frankson up to tell his story. Sean's the co-founder of Plastic Bank, and it, I hope you're gonna be interested in how he's changing the world. Sean. Okay. Hello, hello. My name is Sean Frankson. I'm the co-founder of a company called The Plastic Bank. And at The Plastic Bank, we are on a mission to use code to stop ocean plastic. And this is so important. Every minute of every day, a garbage truck worth of plastic enters our ocean. This is like filling this entire room with plastic. And every couple minutes, just dumping it into the seas. And you know, it's so important that we look at the grand challenges we face in the world and not get upset, but just see the opportunities of solving these problems with code. And honestly, the more messed up that I see the world's getting, the more optimistic I am that code will be the script that saves this planet. And you know, I'm inspired with how can we solve these grand challenges with code. So I'd like to show what we're doing to use code and technology to stop ocean plastic while reducing global poverty at the same time. And for us, it starts with a riddle. If you walked into the kitchen and the sink was overflowing, and you have water pouring onto the floor and just piling up, and all you have is a bucket and a mop, what do you do first? And the answer is simply you turn off the tap. As important as it is to take the plastic out of the ocean, the real step one root cause is how can we use technology to turn off the tap and stop the flow of ocean plastic? So we discovered that 80% of ocean plastic actually starts on land in developing countries where they have almost no waste management systems. It's actually common practice in these regions to just throw the plastic into the rivers, the canals, and the ocean-bound waterways. And they do it because they see plastic of waste. But if you think about it, if every piece of plastic, if every bottle was worth $5, we wouldn't have a single piece of plastic garbage on this planet. So the difference between garbage and value is simply perception. So we look at ways to use technology to reveal the value in plastic, to make plastic too valuable to enter the ocean. So we set up recycling ecosystems around the world where we make it possible for someone to just go out, collect plastic, and earn a living. All the plastic we collect is called social plastic. And we create these reward and incentive systems to bring in social plastic, have it sorted, recycled, and then we sell it to some of the world's largest companies to turn it into products so that these companies can say that this product helps stop ocean plastic while improving people's lives. And we have just had an amazing response. We've had millions of people on social media ask corporations to use social plastic. We've had thousands of people come to us, and we get calls daily of asking, how can we bring the plastic bank to my country? And it was just huge demand and self-proof and social proof that has really just brought the need to scale overnight. We need to go from nothing to exponential. We need to develop and deploy. We needed safety, security, trust. Honestly, we needed help. And the beautiful thing is when you create a movement and an awareness of what you're trying to do, you attract the right people who can genuinely help do what you're trying to do. So we had Cognition Foundry come to us. So Ron Argent heard what we're doing, kind of had an idea of where we're trying to go. And when he painted the picture of the tools and technology that could get us there, it was just an amazing fit because my business partner and I, we're technology entrepreneurs, but we have no idea how to scale a technology globally. But when we can have the partners working with us, putting the right minds together, the right tools together, literally everything became possible. So for us, the foundation of what we do is blockchain and Hyperledger Fabric on Linux One. You know, the back end system is Go language and Postgres. The front-end system is Apache Cordova, Angular 2. And what this does is it creates an entire ecosystem where all parts of the recycling chain can be united. So the app-based platform that we have at its core 
starts with a digital wallet where we have an asset-backed token where when we're in the world's most vulnerable economies, where you can't have a bank account, where it's dangerous to have cash, we can actually replace these entire recycling ecosystems and allow someone who doesn't qualify for a bank account to safely save through recycling. And we start building these ecosystems where the app goes beyond a basic user and has it where anyone can operate a plastics exchange system in any country in the world, where they can become eligible to receive the plastic bank digital rewards and slowly have an entire economy where outside of recycling, even anyone can operate a storefront with the real vision that anyone in the world can operate a convenience store for the world's poor where they can afford everything through recycling, which provides complete financial inclusion. And again, this is entirely done because some of the world's largest corporations are buying the plastic to use in products and very much like fair trade, we're able to pass on that value to the collector who needs it. But at the same time, when products are made, we have blockchain authenticated supply chains. We have blockchain authenticated social and environmental impacts. And this is when we can really bring trust back to the world of technology and back to the world of doing good. I mean, one of the hardest challenges is how do you deliver on the promise of doing good and have the world trust it? And for us, it's all about those trust stamps, blockchain, is a trust stamp. Linux One is a trust stamp. And honestly for us, IBM is a trust stamp when it comes to our investors, our partners, when people ask, you know, as a startup, how do you plan on scaling around the planet? It's these trust stamps that really make everything possible. And, you know, for us it's been an amazing lesson because one of the challenges is how do you develop technology for the world's bottom billion? But at the same time, I just get so inspired because code is universal. Code speaks all languages and code crosses all borders, which I encourage all of you in any of the applications you build, if you can have a way that it doesn't exclude the bottom billion, there's a huge opportunity because we've been through the slums of the world. We work in multiple countries and almost every single person, even in the worst conditions nowadays, have a cell phone. And more often, the world's bottom billion has a smartphone that has applications, which means any of the code we're building, any of the platforms we're building can literally be used by the world. And when we have that mentality of how can we include the bottom billion, that is the next billion users, the next billion customers. And again, the reason that I get inspired and optimistic about the future of this planet is that when we have open source codes and we can build on things and have one solution make another one possible, this is really when I think the script to save this planet will be written in code. And I thank all of you for playing your part. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Sean, and for the work you're doing at Plastic Bank and with Cognition Foundry. It's really awesome, great to see. We've been inspired by it at IBM, and so while we're here, we're gonna try to do something different. We are going to take, for every bottle you all bring to the IBM booth, we will work with Plastic Bank to keep 500 bottles out of the ocean. We have a couple thousand people here, you each bring a bottle. We all today, in the next couple of days, could keep a million bottles out of the ocean and help fight poverty. So with that, in closing, again, I invite you to, to come talk to an IBMer, come to the booth, take a selfie with the Linux One box that's there. Uh, as soon as you walk in, if you keep walking straight, you'll hit it. Um, you can sign up for Unchain the Frame, which is a hackathon with $50,000 worth of prizes. And if you want to get your hands on the technology, you can sign up through the IBM, IBM Linux One Community Cloud and get access. So again, thank you very much, and, and thanks again, Sean. Thank you.